Hello everyone, this is Zephyr here, and welcome to the Monster Hunter Rise digital event for March of 2021. Uh, this actually covers both Monster Hunter Rise and Monster Hunter Stories 2, so uh, it's not just a Rise event. Um, I got to watch it when it was live, uh, but I was at work, so I didn't get to record it, so I have already seen this, uh, but I figured I'd still cover it and kind of go over a lot of the stuff that was revealed. There was nothing too crazy that was revealed. Uh, but there were still some cool things, uh, some things to get hyped about for Rise as well as Stories 2. So we're going to check that out. And um, as with all the times I cover these digital events, I'll be pausing the video at things to kind of talk about them. Um, I do think what I'll do is anytime there's a trailer, we'll watch the entire trailer and then I'll go back. Um, that way you can see things without them being stopped. And I'll probably react to them as they're showing it, and then we'll go back and look at things um, a little more in-depth. We'll see how it goes. I know I'm not great at these, but I still want to cover them and kind of talk about them because I love Monster Hunter, and uh, these are always pretty cool to watch. So uh, let's go ahead and get it started and uh, check out what they have to show. Hello everyone, I'm Ryozo Tsujimoto, producer on the Monster Hunter series. I'm here today to bring you the latest info on Monster Hunter Rise and Monster Hunter Stories 2 Wings of Ruin. Hope you enjoy the show! Starting with Stories 2. Alright. Now, let's have a look at the latest information on Monster Hunter Stories 2 Wings of Ruin. But before we jump into the details, check out the new trailer. Oh, you know what? Hang on one second. I'm going to check something, so there will be probably quite a cut here. Okay, never mind. It already went to the, the, the 1080. Uh, when I was watching this at first uh, earlier, so I don't have to do a cut, so ignore what I said. But uh, when I was watching this, when it was live, it started at the much lower resolution. And for whatever reason, I was like, oh crap, I gotta check, but it's already on the, the 1080p, so we're good. Your grandfather, Red, was a fine, upstanding rider. Nergi's in. Can't wait to ride the spiky boy. So it looks amazing. All riders have to strike out on their own someday. Kana can guide you. Scout flies are in as well. To learn what you're and Kuliaku. And what you must do as a rider. So bow is one of the new weapons. I feel like they showed the other new weapon there for like half a second, and I didn't catch it, so I'll try and go back, but it could have just been bow again. Um, Come with me, please. We'll have I to try and know. pause it at that frame. Will help us once it hatches. Yeah, that stupid cat is back. Navi root. That kinship stone. Right. Some even say it was such a monster that laid waste to the village that once stood on this site. I've never seen anything like this. So you're saying that inside this egg. Rathalos with weird wings. Should this Rathalos hatch and awaken to its destructive power, you will be to blame for what happens. Are you prepared to take that risk? Rathalos aren't monsters to worship or to make bonds with. Don't you get it? They're nothing but dangerous pests. Don't back down! 
somebody! Keep them safe in Tathbadi. Rosa! There is nothing to fear. Man, I love the music for Monster Hunter Stories. That song always just hits me right in the feels. So now there's co-op, which is cool. There's Bo again. And we get a release date, which is July 9th. So I'm excited for that. Uh, deluxe edition stuff. Pre-order bonus. And amiibos. Hopefully I'll be able to get everything. And if, uh, well, we'll cover it in a second. Let's just one thing at a time. So, all right, I'm going to pause it here because the trailer's over and we're going to go back and look at some stuff. Uh, so the first thing, it says Nintendo Switch here, but someone else found that there was, I don't know if it, the trailer was later released separately, but it is coming to PC as well. And I believe it's also coming to PC on July 9th. There's no delay on it, uh, unlike Rise. So if you want to play it on PC or... Better yet, if you're planning on playing Rise on PC, you might want to get Monster Hunter Stories 2 on PC because they connect and you unlock uh, layered armor in both games if you have saves on the same system. Um, so if you plan on playing Rise on the Switch, I suggest getting Stories on the Switch. If you plan on playing Rise on PC, I suggest getting Stories on PC. Uh, obviously, if you're waiting for Rise on PC, this might be a good game to tide you over. Uh, get it on PC, play it, enjoy it. Uh, it'll help you uh, bide the time since there's an entire year to wait for Rise on PC. But um, they did confirm that this is coming to both PC and Switch, but I'm not certain that the release date for PC is the same as Switch. I just, someone said it, I don't remember where, it was somewhere on Reddit. And um, so uh, I just figured I'd mention it. Right, so if you have Monster Hunter Rise data, then your Monster Hunter Stories 2 will get the Kimura Garb uh, layered armor. Um, obviously, if you're playing this on PC, uh, and it does release at the same time as Switch, you're going to be waiting a while to get that Kimura armor because you won't have Rise until next year. But uh, it is cool for anyone who is playing Rise on Switch that they can have this armor if they want. Uh, it looks good. I like it. So I might use it a bit. Um, next, let's look at... Maybe. There we go. So, Deluxe Edition. Uh, okay. This is something I noticed. The Deluxe Edition is digital only. However, even though that's the case... It does seem that you can get a physical copy of Monster Hunter Stories 2 and buy the Deluxe Kit as DLC. So if you want a physical edition, you can still get the Deluxe version. Um, it's just DLC instead of uh, a, a direct game. Whereas if you're going to get a digital, the digital, the, the Deluxe Edition is only digital. I don't know why they did it that way, um, but you can't buy a Deluxe Edition a deluxe edition physical you just have to buy the standard edition physical and then purchase the dlc separate uh they they did the same thing for world and iceborne there was a, a deluxe version of those games but if you bought the standard you could still buy the deluxe pack um as a separate dlc so don't worry if you want to get it physical you can still get all this stuff you just have to buy it separate from the game so uh you get the game obviously an out uh an outfit for, for an outfit for enna uh which is the girl that seems to give us the Rathalos egg. Um, layered armor for the player. Uh, it, it, this looks like male and female versions. The male version looks kind of way better than the female version. Because uh, it looks super sinister and awesome. And the female version, once again, shows thighs. And I don't know why they didn't keep the face covered like with the male version. But whatever. Um... Sticker sets. I'm not quite sure what sticker sets are going to end up being used for in stories. Uh, but since there's co-op quests, I assume it's for communication similar to in World and Iceborne. Um, you also get a hairstyle for the player, which is Spiky Nurgle, which is kind of cool. Because that, that doesn't look like hair to me. Like, it looks like you literally have Nergigante spikes and horns. So that's cool. And then you get two Naviru outfits, which is the Puke Puke costume and a Nergigante costume. 
Uh, let me just hit play here so we can get to the other thing you get for pre-ordering. So uh, you get a Kimura Maiden outfit for Enna if you pre-order. Um, so that's kind of cool. It's just the, the outfit that the uh, Maidens in Rise wear. And I just noticed for the first time that she's a Wyverian. Huh. How did I... Or wait, or is that maybe her outfit? Let's go back a second and check if the other outfit makes her a Wyverian. Or if... Uh... No. Okay. Yeah, she's a Wyverian. I never noticed that. Her ears and uh, she's only got four fingers. That's kind of cool. Okay. I didn't notice that before. So the other thing I want to see is if we can figure out... Problem is I don't remember where it was in the trailer. But I want to see if we can figure out what the other new weapon is. Um, because we saw Bo. We also saw that Puke Puke is in. Ah. I know. Oh, okay. So there it was. It's one little tiny frame. This is going to be tough to catch. And what you must Hammer. Do as a rider. Oh. Oh, it's still just bow. Okay, that was just bow shooting the arrow. Yeah, okay. Never mind. I thought maybe we got to see the other new weapon. So, they said they were adding two weapons. One of them, obviously, has been revealed to be bow. Because in the original stories, there was uh, sword and shield, great sword, hammer, and hunting horn. Now there's going to be bow. Honestly, I'm assuming the last one is going to be lance. And the reason I assume that is because we already have two bladed weapons two bludgeon weapons, a ranged weapon, but we don't have either of the lances, so I would assume that's when, what it's going to be. I want it to be longsword, because I'd love to use longsword, since that's my main, but I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, I, I, I do think it's going to end up being lance, or it's going to be light bow gun. Those are my guesses, because uh, we already have four melee weapons, and now only one ranged, so I could see it being a second ranged weapon. Um, I don't want it to be a bow gun, but uh, we'll see. Um, Lance would be okay, but I, I wouldn't end up using it. I'd just use Greatsword again, I think. But that's just my assumption. We'll find out when the game comes out. I gotta get back to the end here. So we can continue forward. We'll just continue forward from here. Alright, so that's the new trailer for Monster Hunter Stories 2. Um, they, they just showed off. Uh, Nergigante's in. Puke Puke's in. Kuliaku's in. Uh, Bo is, the new, is one of the new weapons. I don't know if they showed anything else. I don't remember. But so new trailer's cool. I like the art style for this game. I love the music. I'm stoked for this. I will assume that I won't be done with Rise yet by the time it comes out. So I might end up having to play them both. But by the time this comes out, I'll at least be in the, the end game of Rise. So I don't think it'll be too big of a deal for me to, to switch to something else for a bit. Um... So that's that's pretty cool. I'm I'm excited for this. It's basically Monster Hunter Pokemon. Not only did it unveil more intriguing plot points, but Naviru, the protagonist's partner from the previous installment in the series, also made an appearance. She'll be along for the ride this time as well. Uh. The trailer also revealed that the egg you've been entrusted with contains Razewing Ratha, a monster with black wings spoken about in legend. But so what does this legend really mean? I don't mean, mean Naviru. I mean Together Ratha. with Enna and Naviru, you oh, set forth on an epic, adventure-filled journey to learn the truth. For more info about the game's characters and monsters, please check out the newly updated official website. As shown in the trailer, Monster Hunter Stories 2 Wings of Ruin will have a worldwide release date of July 9th, 2021. Next, we'd like to touch on product information. In addition to the standard edition, we are pleased to introduce the deluxe edition. We already looked over this. This digital bundle includes the base game and downloadable content, such as layered armor for the player and, and an outfit mentioned that for it's a Anna. digital version. You as can't get the deluxe edition bonus, physical. You can receive the but again, it, I, I don't remember where I saw it, but I did see that you, if you buy the physical version, the, the digital deluxe pack 
Moving along, can be purchased because the, the digital deluxe version is just um, the base game plus the digital Ray's deluxe pack. Ratha, your so it is a separate DLC. Anna the Wyverian, who is friends with your grandfather Red, and Sukino, a young hunter's palico. Each of these amiibo will grant you access to Oh, I just noticed that Tsukino has one of those uh, birds from amiibo. World on its head. I don't remember what they're called. Downy Crake, well maybe? Maybe that's what it's called? Daily bonus. We hope you're as excited about them as we are. I mean, they look okay. I like the, the Rise amiibos better. The physical and digital versions of the game, including the Deluxe Edition, will be available for pre-order soon. As of the recording of this video, they're still not up. For details regarding pre-orders, please visit the official website. Lastly, we'd like to touch on a special bonus that can be obtained in this game by linking it up with Monster Hunter Rise. If you have saved data for Monster Hunter Rise, you can receive Kumura Garb, special layered armor for the player which resembles the hunter's gear in that game. I love that layered armor is now like a standard for all Monster Hunter stuff. It's great. Development continues on Monster Hunter Stories 2 Wings of Ruin as we prepare for its July 9th, 2021 release. We will be offering more details soon, so stay tuned. Ah, I love that song. All right, rise time. All right, let's dive into the latest info on Monster Hunter Rise, which releases on March 26th. We have a new trailer for you today, so take a look. Yep, that's right, everyone. Two favorites are confirmed. Nargakuga and Zenogar are in. So happy about this. Just for that theme. And that was a new attack. I've never seen Zenogar do that before. This is gonna be good. Poor Nargakuga. It's just always getting beat up. Pack of monsters in a giant stampede. They attack the village in a frenzied rage. Nobody knows why this happens, but it came close to wiping out our village last time. Spider looks crazy. <laughs> that looks so painful. It just belly flops you. Oh, that great sword looked awesome. You are what I call a true hero. Seeing you face the calamity has given us so much hope. I saw Raja on the I'm turning off those callouts for sure. Now they're showcasing returning world monsters. So uh, if you didn't know, uh, Anjanath, Puke Puke, Juratotis, Kuliyaku, and um, Toby Kadachi are all back. These Apex are Juros. And now, this this excited so many people. Zenogre and Mizutsune finally have a uh, Turf War. Though I guess it makes sense they wouldn't have before, because Turf War started with World, and both of them were in World and Iceborne. So. I don't know what the heck that thing is, but there's some skull in the volcano map that people found, and that's clearly the monster from that skull. Monster Hunter Rise will finally be released on March 26th. Oh, it's so close. And I'd like to tell you about everything we've announced so far, including the trailer you just saw. First, let's talk about the Wirebug, which brings a variety of new actions to Monster Hunter Rise. 
It provides some helpful ways to explore each locale more freely. I've For seen instance, these frame drops in their the footage makes me sad. Move around quickly and even fly through the air. You can also run along high walls until you run out of stamina. Each of the 14 weapon types has its own unique set of attacks using the wire bug called silk bind attacks. You can also use the wire fall feature to dodge after taking damage. The I gotta get good at the wire fall. Mobility to your move set like this. Now I'd like to talk about switch skills, a completely new feature to expand your hunter's move set. So this is crazy. Switch skills As basically you progress in the game, you'll unlock the ability to switch out certain regular attacks and silk find attacks at will. Yeah, there you go. They basically work like um, style. styles from Generations Ultimate while being the a little more um, customizable. That weren't in the demo, so please look forward to that. So you can pick and choose some of the moves that from your combos that you switch right, out and put other things in their place. So unlike and Generations Ult and Generations Ultimate, where picking a certain style meant specific moves were gone for new things, now you get to pick and choose what you swap out, and you're never truly losing anything because you're swapping it. So that's that's pretty sick. This game has a new type of buddy to assist you during your hunt. I'm excited to the try out the the switch skills and see on back and it will how we can develop well. our own hunting style. I think it, I think that is probably course, what I'm most excited for. Back to, to um, I didn't like styles support. and arts in Generations and Generations Ultimate in single player, uh, because they, they weren't customizable. You basically just picked one and just dealt with whatever it was. But now but we get to pick and choose, and that, that is exciting, and it seems less overpowered along. because there's no arts. So it's, just, uh, it's just styles, and then I guess the wire bug moves are kind of like arts, but they're, they're not nearly as uh, drastically OP. There are five distinctive locales in this game. Yay, so this is cool. Shrine Ruins. So this is a brand new map. Uh, we got to play it in the demo. Flooded Forest. This is a third generation map that's been remade for Rise. So that's exciting, and I kind of hope it means a gobble stack. This is a new map. We saw this uh, in an earlier Sandy reveal. Plains. This is also a third generation map. Remade. Lava and this is a new one. This is where they people Each saw that skull that I think is that weird monster we saw at the end of the trailer. This game also introduces new forms of endemic life that increase your hunter's stats or otherwise help out during your hunts. Make sure you search every nook and cranny for these creatures. You might find something unexpected. I'm still torn on how I feel about the endemic life because I like it because it limits you a little more than Mantles did, ecologies. which is good because Mantles were pretty powerful. Like, they, they were... I don't want to call them OP, but they were powerful. Uh, and the Endemic Life won't be as powerful because if you use it, it's gone until you find a new one, unlike Mantles, which just recharge. So I think it's a good evolution of the system without just straight removing something. But I am concerned about how much time we're going to spend just running around a map grabbing Endemic Life for stat boosts. I like the idea of the um, more technical endemic life more than the stat boost ones. So ones like the puppet spider that allow you to do a wyvern ride uh, or the ones that cause blights on the monsters. Those ones I think are great. The spear of birds, those are the ones I'm concerned about. But we'll, we'll have to see how it's truly implemented in the full game. I'm not going to make a true judgment until I see how it works in the, you know, in the actual release. I also really like the designs of a lot of these new monsters. Uh, most notably, Goss Harag. I think that thing looks amazing. This music keeps reminding me of the Chrono Trigger theme. I don't know why, but as it plays, I just like... It gets to a point where I'm like, I keep thinking it's going to turn into the rest of the Chrono Trigger main theme, and it doesn't, and I'm like, oh. The fact that bird spits fire is amazing. And they make a great Azuchi look way cooler than it is. It's like chopping down bamboo and stuff, but it's, it's just weak. And of course, Monster Hunter Rise's flagship monster, Magnamalo. 
I really love the design of this thing. It might partially be because of how much I love Zenogre, and it's clearly using it's the Zenogre skeleton, the but it just looks so different from other monsters, because it, it truly looks like an Oni. It looks like a demon. It's super cool. Of course, many fan favorite monsters also make their return. We Rathian, announced why are you trying to fight a Rajong? That's a terrible idea. Kezu. I love Kezu being back. And Rathalos previously. But today we showed off Nargakuga. Can't wait for that. And Zenogre yeah, as well. Especially that. Now, Mr. Ichinose, the director of the game, will tell you a bit more about the rampage. So this is interesting. And I don't know how I feel about it. Again, it's another thing that I can't Hi, judge everyone. until we actually Ichinose, get the, the game, on but Hunter Rise. It just, it's good to be I don't know, again. it seems weird. The Rampage is a quest type where you protect Kimura Village from hordes of monsters. You have to use hunting installations to repel them and keep the stronghold safe. The quest is complete when all of the hordes have been repelled or when the final major threat has been vanquished. See, it's literally tower defense. The time before the monster it's weird. To place your hunting installations. And you can see on the left there, there's just like little sub-quests that you need to do as well. Like, inflict Make a status sure of uh, ailment, repel using cannon, gather drop materials. Like, what? It just seems odd. When the counter signal is activated, your hunter's attack will increase dramatically. So that's your sign to get up close and personal. We're here to offer assistance. Your friends from Komoda Village will join as well and provide invaluable backup. I kind of like that. I like seeing NPC hunters doing stuff. There are also extra powerful monsters that lead the horde known as major threats and apexes. Do not let it pass. Not to be confused with the Apex from The goal is to defend ultimate. the stronghold and repel the monsters. Fight alongside the village's defenders and make sure no harm comes to the village. Quests in Monster Hunter Rise are divided into single-player village quests and hub quests that can be played solo or in multiplayer. I don't like that they did this. I really don't. Talk to the respective quest maidens to take on the quest you I understand like. that it's like old school in Monster Hunter where you village and hub are separated, but I thought to a group the to evolution to having all quests be able to be multiplayer was Any better. Any player in the same lobby can take um, on a quest from the quest board in the but, gathering hub. I mean, what what's she gonna do? It's just... You can use shortcuts to join my biggest complaint lobby, i guess is that my underway. significant other does not want to she she plays this with me because she knows i enjoy it and there she wants to spend time with me. Of difficulty depending she doesn't on want the to do stuff solo she just and wants to hunt with me so she won't touch the, the story so if the hub gets locked early. behind the story she'll just never play it I'll have to get through if the story for her first or get her solo, to the point where she can do hub you can quests. Use join requests. So it's like, up with it just, I don't know. That's just my personal gripe. I just think it's silly for them to have separated them again. Uh, use this but I guess that was their way to get around the whole on your own. can't uh, players can also add a can't do quests with other people until you're through the cutscene thing. Instead, you just have the same any quest as a cutscene is a solo style. quest, I'm sure. And so you have to do it solo. It's whatever. You can create your own Hunter Connect or join one I will make do, but I do I do prefer prefer the world system where everything can be multiplayer. Other yourself to any hunter connect you've joined. Furthermore, there's a like function to make it easier to reconnect with people you've played with. When you complete a quest in multiplayer, you can send likes to other players using this the This is kind of cool. I wonder if this is similar, like if sending a like just immediately gets you their guild card or something. That's if how it used to be, is you traded guild cards. Other, but that took so much time likes, that uh, to find each other's not a lot of people directly. did it. So I wonder if um, 
that Let's replaces that, and feature, but you still get their guild card so you can get friendship hunts. points or whatever it is to get tickets. You can zoom in and out and adjust the For those who don't know, in older Monster Hunters, um, the the people you had a guild, the guild card of would increase your, your friendship rank or you your companion rank or whatever they called Nintendo it. Switch console, and when you hit certain thresholds, you'd get a Veggie Elder, Elder ticket. Uh, I think Rainbow Veggie Elder tickets were the best, if you want to and you could trade those for gems and mantles. Which that system obviously was replaced by the Wyvernian print uh, systems that uh, from getting like the from the, the Steamworks and uh, bounties. So I wonder Today, if the old system will still be in place and if the likes will trade guild cards or if that system is just gone. We'll have to see. If you've played this game, you can unlock the default rider armor as layered armor in Monster Hunter Rise, which is cool. Not a fan of the default rider armor from Stories 2. On top of the deluxe okay. kit, which contains another set of traditional Kimura Ah, yeah, armor, see, here's where uh, I had heard it. It's just later in the show. The, the deluxe kit is its own thing, so if you get the styles, physical. Face oh, wait, never mind. We were talking about Stories 2. I'm an idiot. Never mind, as ignore well me. Layered armor for your buddies. But I assume. The deluxe kit will work the same for stories as but it does for Rise, where it's just its own store. DLC that you can buy separate if you don't get the, the deluxe edition. Time demo that was made available in January Yay, will we get a new demo. Return on the date shown Starting on Friday? This time we've no. added a challenging advanced when's, quest or Thursday. where you get to take on the flagship monster, Magnamalo. Yeah, Thursday is when it releases. This will give you a taste of what kind of monster it is. So we'll definitely be playing this. I'll record it. I'm sure it will go terribly. Won't be easy, I had trouble with Nergigante when World was releasing. Out. I had trouble with Velcano when Iceborne was re releasing, but I was able to beat both of them. Game, so I'm going to assume that I will have trouble with Magnamalo, but I will beat it eventually. If you already played the demo in January, you can update it to this new demo to add the Magnamalo quest. And to reset your remaining number of tries as well. So you can start a fresh. Which makes me very happy. The four quests from the January demo are still available. So if you're playing the game for the first time, you might want to start with those. I'm really not a fan of Wyvern riding. I know a lot of people are excited for it, but I think it's too powerful. For our final bit of news for today, have a look at the following trailer. Yay, another trailer. And this one's really exciting. So that roar was not Camellios. We are planning three updates for after the game's release. I don't think. Uh, I'm just going to pause it here real quick because the trailer's over and I want to talk about this. But um, So that roar does not sound like Camellios. It's possible they updated Camellios' roar, but usually when they do these reveals, there's a roar at the end that is supposed to be a hint towards the next monster that's releasing. And they clearly say here... The April title update is not just Camellios. There's several new monsters for it. So there's something else. Now, people are speculating that it could be Gormagala, which listening to the roar there sounds closer to me. Uh, someone else said it's Shigaru Magala, which, I mean, again, they have similar roars since they're, you know, the same thing. One's just the uh, more grown-up version. But... Um, those sound more right to me because it sounded more sinister, but other people are saying it's Legia Cruz, and it's possible it's Legia Cruz. Leviathans are back, so it's possible it could be, but that, to me, did not sound like Legia Cruz's roar, so I'm I'm leaning more towards the people who think it's Gormagala or Shigaru Magala, um, but I'm not certain. I Like, listening to the roar, it didn't trigger anything in my mind of what it would... Like, I wasn't, like, snapping my fingers and thinking, oh, it's exactly this. Uh, 
So I, I don't know for sure, but that's just what people are theorizing. It's it's Gormagala, Shigaramagala, or Legia Cruz. It could be something completely new. I'm not sure. No one's been able to pin it down um, completely, so it could be something new that just has a similar sounding roar. And then obviously they have a date to be in, uh, to be decided for even more monsters. So we are getting uh, free title updates, which is fantastic. But the thing they say after this is something that concerns me. So I'm just going to let this play and then we'll talk about it. The first update will include several new monsters, such as Camellios, which we announced today. It will also unlock your hunter rank cap and add some related features. Okay, that's what concerns me. I don't care about the hunter rank cap being unlocked because they're not saying where it's unlocked. I mean, if you look at Iceborne, it may not have been from post game updates, but there were always like hunter rank caps that you'd get to and have to break to, to move on to new content. Uh, but those were all in the base game. You could get from in world, you could get from hunter rank one to nine, nine, nine before any of the free title updates were released. Same with Iceborne with Master Rank. You get 1 to 999 before any free title updates. This is clearly saying there's some cap that you're stuck at until the free title update. That doesn't bother me so much because I'm sure there's plenty of content. Like, people are freaking out being like, oh, there's not going to be any endgame content in the base game. This is dumb. I don't think that's the case. And most of the time, the Hunter Rank caps are... Like, they're pointless. They're really just to keep you from doing harder stuff until you've hopefully earned better gear to get through the harder stuff. But for the most part, they are inconsequential. So I don't care so much about that. What bothers me is that there's features that are not in the game until the first free title update. So a couple of things this could be. COVID has been a thing. There's been a pandemic. They didn't want to push the game's release date back. So instead, they're releasing the game, but some of the stuff they wanted to put in, they're putting in after. That's fine. I Like, if that's all that is, I get it. I mean, it's awesome for them to not be pushing the game back and just saying, look, we know you're all excited. We want to release at our, the date we want to release at, but there's still stuff we need to finish up. You're getting it free at the end of April. They're not charging us, so it's not that big a deal. It's free content. Cool. The Monster Hunter teams have never let me down with screwing us over on content. So I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. This is not like... If if this somehow turns out to be really bad, they'll have they'll lose my faith. But I have faith in them that the game will be completely full of stuff to do. I, I don't want to call it full featured since there's clearly features that are being related after the fact. But we don't know what they are. So it's hard to really judge it, but I'm sure the game will have plenty to do. And even if this stuff never happened, I feel like it will still be a full game that you can play and enjoy, get tons of hours out of, and it will feel like a full game. My bet is these features just relate to the new monsters that are being released. Like, for example, what if Gormagala is one of the monsters that's released? What if that related features is just the frenzy virus blight? I hope to God we don't get, you know, infected monsters or apex monsters in the f sense of 4 ultimate. I hated 4 ultimate's apex system. But those related features could just mean that the frenzy virus effect that you get on your hunter, maybe that's what they're talking about. Uh, and if you don't know what that is, you'd get the virus and you'd have a set amount of time to deal enough damage to Gormagala to overcome the virus. It was the, your own, like, um, frenzy apex system. Uh, if you overcame the virus, you got a massive affinity boost, and you basically, all your hits would be critical. Oh, I shouldn't say all of them, but you, you'd get a big affinity boost. If you didn't overcome the virus, you'd no longer recover red health, and I think you took more damage. Um, so... That could just be the feature, but uh, it could also mean that there's there's things that they wanted to put in the game that they just can't have done in time for the March 26th release. Um, but it does concern me because I don't like when games release and they're not finished. Uh, so we won't really know until it's released and then we get the free title update and see what it adds. But again, I have faith that they're giving us a full game and this is just extra stuff um, and that's okay. So we'll see. This concern, but I'm going to stay optimistic. We will tell you about other updates at a later time. Sounds good.
let's look at the product info for Monster Hunter Rise one more time. The game releases on Friday, March 26, 2021. There will be both a standard edition and a deluxe edition containing recommended DLC. On the same day, we will also release three different I like those later armors. They look pretty cool. As a pre-order bonus, I also like these you can also armors. get layered armor for your Palico and Palamute, as well as a novice talisman that'll help out during the early stages of the game. Make sure to pre-order so you don't miss out. Even though it says that the pre-order bonus may be made available after release. We hope you enjoyed today's show. To reiterate, Monster Hunter Stories 2 Wings of Ruin is releasing on Friday, July 9th, 2021. And Monster Hunter Rise will be available on Friday, March 26th. Thanks for watching. Okay, and that's the end of it. Um, I guess I'll let it go for a little longer. I don't think there was anything else it shows. Yeah, no. Okay, so that's the end of it. Um, there was one other thing that I saw, but I'm not. The only reason I'm not going to go back to it is because I I've looked at it and I don't know specifically what it is. I'm guessing it's one of the switch skills for longsword, but it did look like uh, there was a change. Like, you can swap out how the end of the spirit combo works. Or maybe it's the full spirit combo. It was only there for, like, a short couple of frames. And I missed it when we were watching the trailers here this time. Um, but someone was saying it's the uh, the Valor Longsword spirit combo from uh, Generations Ultimate. But I don't know for sure. Um... But I, I'm excited for that system. To be able to swap things out and hunters have their own unique styles of hunting. I'm sure there will be meta setups. I'm not even going to look them up. I'm just going to do what feels good to me and is fun. But uh, I, I'm excited for that system. Uh, it'll be cool to switch some stuff out and try out new things. I already know if you go on the Monster Hunter Rise uh, website, they are showing a third wire bug move for every weapon. So for the long sword, I think it's called the Sakura Slash. Um, it is uh, like a couple, like it's multiple kind of quick slashes as you dash back and forth using your wire bug at the monster. Um, the problem is it replaces the flying kick, which if you remember, the flying kick is what leads into the helm splitter. Uh, so that would be a weird thing to swap out. Uh, the Helm Splitter uses up a level of your gauge, whereas the Sakura Slash supposedly raises your gauge by a level if it connects. So um, that'll be interesting to play around with as well. So there's going to be a lot of things to do and check out with the weapons as we're playing this game, and I think that's cool. Like, it's going to be awesome figuring out what our favorite, like, skill loadout is Uh not even skill loadout, but just our, our combo loadout um, on top of picking the best weapons, picking the best armors, setting up our, our palicos and palamutes. Like, there's going to be a lot to do, and I'm, I'm excited for that. Wyvern riding, I think, is the only thing I'm not excited for because I think it's, it's, it's too powerful. It really is. The fact that you can jump on a big monster, take it to fight another big monster, and then potentially smash it into a wall for extra damage is ridiculous like it's i don't know but we'll see maybe it'll get toned down they already said that um there's like hunting horn is getting a nerf and uh spirit Helmbreaker on longsword is also getting a nerf because they were over tuned uh were too powerful so i don't know if those those nerfs will be in the the version two of the demo or not but i guess we'll find out when we play that uh however that is the uh digital event there wasn't a ton of new news but there was some fun stuff to check out uh it got me more hyped for rise i'm super excited for stories too i'm glad we finally have a release date so there's a lot to to be excited for and a lot to look forward to uh and i'm excited for that however thank you so much for watching please feel free to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it you can also subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell icon to get email updates when I upload new videos. And of course, you can leave any comments or suggestions in the area below the video. I've also left my Twitch and Twitter links in the description. That way you can check out those platforms if interested. However, that is all I have for you today. So thank you so much for watching. And as usual, this is Zephyr, signing out.